In today's video, I show you how to install and configure MB. MB is a home media server built on top of other popular open source technologies. It brings together movies, music, television, and more in one dazzling interface. Basically, it's an alternative to Plex and Jellyfin. Let's get MB set up. All right, for installation, first thing we're gonna do is jump over to our apps tab. We'll go to the search box in the top left and type in MB, E-M-B-Y. Go ahead and search for that. All right, we'll look through the results. Right here's the bin hex one. I am looking for the actual official one, which is right here, MB server, MB repository. Once you find that, go ahead and click install. I did not get any warnings on IP address conflicts, but let's check just to make sure. I'm gonna scroll down, open up, show Docker allocations, expand that. Go back up to the port number here, 8096 is the default port, double click. Hitting control F on the keyboard will bring up the search feature. It's found three results, one, two, and three. Yep, that is in use, so I will need to change that. As always, I'm just gonna go up here and increment this by one. So I'll change this to 8097. Once again, double click on it, control F, shows one result right there, nothing down here. So that one's clear, I can use that one. Scrolling down a little bit, we've got host path two. This is where our media files are gonna be located. And my media is set for the trash guides media folder structure. So I'll click on this field and browse to there. So we got slash MNT, then under user, and then data and media. Once you've got your media location selected, go ahead and click out of that field to minimize that. Everything else can be left in defaults. Scrolling down, I'm gonna hide Docker allocations again, and then hit apply. And while that's installing, why don't you come join us in Discord? I'll leave a link in the description. And once that's done, go ahead and click done. All right, now let's go up to our Docker tab, find MB server in the list here. Over on the right, I'm gonna turn on the auto start. Then back over to the left, I'm gonna click on its icon, drop down and select web UI. All right, now that we've got MB installed, let's move on to setup. First thing you'll find after signing in is the welcome to MB page. And here it's asking what our desired language is. So I'm gonna drop down and select English cause that's obviously what I'm speaking. Once you've got your language selected, go ahead and hit next. Now we need to create our first user. I'm gonna take out the username that's here and enter my own, which I'm gonna put in demo. And then I'm gonna create a password. Once again, my super secret password, and then confirm that password. Once you've got those set, go ahead and hit next. Now we need to set up our media libraries. MB has support for multiple library types, movies, TV shows, music, music videos, home movies, all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and start with movies first. So I'm gonna hit the plus new library. Under content type, you can drop down to select which type of content you're gonna be adding. I'm gonna choose movies, but as you can tell, like I said, there's music, TV shows, audiobooks, books, games, all kinds of stuff listed here. Once you find your category, go ahead and click on it. Under display name, you can give it a name. I'm just gonna leave it on movies. I think it's a great name. Next, we need to add folders. So go ahead and click the plus add under folders to add a folder to your media. Over on the right over here, we're gonna take this little slide bar, drag down, find slash MNT. This is the location that we had mapped earlier in the configuration of the container itself. So now at this point, once we're in there, scroll down, looking for movies, and there they are. Once you've got yours selected, go ahead and hit OK. If you've got additional movie folders that you need to map to it, you know, like 3D movies or kids movies or whatever the case may be, you can just go hit add again, browse to it, and add that same folder underneath this library. Next down, we've got library settings, the preferred metadata download language. This is all the information about the movies. So we'll click into there and select the language you'd like. English certification country. This is the country in which the movies will be rated and that kind of stuff. I'm in the United States. So I'll scroll down and select the United States. Scrolling down a little bit, we've got preferred image download language. This is gonna be for things like backdrops and posters and that kind of stuff. So whatever poster information you want displayed for you, select the language accordingly. Once again, English is what I'm gonna choose. Next down, we've got the option to ignore files containing the word sample in the file name. So if you've got an image that has sample in front of it, it's just a short clip of the movie. This is where you can set to ignore that. You can adjust the size. Anything in this case, less than 300 megabytes will be considered ignored. Next couple, I'm just gonna leave on defaults, real-time monitoring. Yes, I want to look for media. All right, scrolling down some more. Movie metadata downloaders. These are the different metadata sites that you can pull from. To enable them, you just click in it, add it, disable it. Once again, deselect it. You can drag them up and down, whatever order you want them to be in. I'm just gonna leave it on defaults and scroll down some more. Next, we have collections. 
So if you've got a collection of movies, something like Nightmare on Elm Street, they're up to what, number 47 now or something <laughs> ridiculous like that? I have no idea. But you can have them put into a group, a collection per se, and it wants to know how many you want it to be. If you've got two or more, it's going to add it to a collection. If you want to have it four or more, you can just set it to whatever you'd like. I think two is good. So I'm going to enable that feature, toggle it on, two I'm going to leave, we'll move on. Allow adult metadata. If you've got adult content in your libraries, do you want it to pull that information and get covers and that kind of stuff? And turn that on there. All right, scrolling down some more. Movie image fetchers, same thing like the metadata. You can get background images and posters and cover art and that kind of stuff. And right here, you set the order in which they're pulled from. I think everything here is pretty much good on default. It's just going to scroll down. Right next, we've got video preview thumbnails. And what that does is it scrubs the media and creates little thumbnails. So as you're scrubbing through the video, jumping forward, you've got a little image of where you're at in the whole scene. It does take up more disk space and some CPU time to go through all the files and create those. So that's up to you. Next down is subtitle downloaders. It's nice to have subtitles. I'm just going to leave that on defaults. Next one down is automatic subtitle downloads. Which language would you like it in? Once again, I'm going to select my language, which is English, right there. Scrolling down some more. Everything here looks good. Defaults are good. All right, under playback, we've got the option here to set the minimum resume percentage. So at 3%, titles are going to be assumed unplayed if stopped before this time. So if you start watching something, you're 1% into it and you stop it, it'll mark it as unplayed. Anything over 90%. It's going to mark it as played. And the last item here, this is the minimum resume duration in seconds. So anything under two minutes here, it won't have the option to resume it. And you can adjust this up and down to whatever suits your needs here. All right, this is good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK now. And you'll see we've got a movie library added. Now let's go add the next one, which I believe was music. Yep, display name, music is good. Folders, once again, it's the same process. Scroll down, go to slash MNT, find your music, select it. Hit OK. Once again, metadata language, folder structure. I'm going to leave most of this in defaults. Country is United States. Language again is English. Metadata, scrolling down some more. Music collections, album art fetchers, art images, song image, music video fetchers. All that looks good. Just going to go ahead and hit OK now. Now let's go add one for TV shows. New library, content type. TV shows. I'm going to leave the display name as TV shows. I think that's a good name. Folders. I'm going to click add again. We're going to browse to our TV shows slash MNT and then TV and hit OK. Once again, library settings. We need to set the desired language. Drop down, select English. Certification country for me, United States again. Scrolling down. Preferred image download language. I set to English. Sample size again, 300 megabytes. That's good. Season metadata, episodes, collections, adult content, more metadata. Scrolling down more, image, episodes, episode image, that's all good. The one I'm looking for is right here, markers. So for markers, what it does, enabling this, allows the system to go through and scan all the files. And yes, it's going to take some more disk space and some more processor time. But in my opinion, it's worth it because once it's done, you'll have the option to be able to skip the intros. So if you've watched the same show over and over binge watching it and if you're watching the same intro to the show it can get a little repetitive enabling this gives you the option to skip those it's a nice thing i love it so i'm gonna go ahead and turn this on we can run it as a scheduled task or as a scheduled task and when media is added i'm going to select that option subtitle downloaders is next once again select your language if you want subtitles i think everything else is good here once again the playback settings resume and all that it's all the same Gonna leave it alone and hit okay now if you have any other libraries you want to add it's the same exact process you go under new library select the content type like if you had music videos or home videos or whatever you want you just go through set it up the same way you just find the media browse the location give it a name all that good stuff i personally don't need any more i'm just going to exit out of there and hit next next option we've got here is to configure remote access and if you read through here it's using the upnp which I would not do. It is not the most secure thing in the world. So I would turn that off if you want to do a manual port forward or something of that nature. That'd be a lot better option for you. Once I've got that turned off, I'm going to hit next. Next, we have to accept the terms of use. So go ahead and toggle that on. Accept the terms of use. 
and privacy policy in terms of use are listed there if you feel like reading through all that legalese. Once you've got that accepted, go ahead and hit next. And we're done. Quick and easy. Now you'll see here it's got different apps listed. If you need to get the media client for an Amazon device or a Google Play device, Android device, iOS, Apple TV, Roku, Windows, LG, and Windows 8, 8.1. Wow. Does anybody still use Windows 8? Hmm. It's terrible. That's interesting. So clicking on any of these will bring up the page that you can download the app for it. Personally, I just go on my own device and just go right to the Play Store on the device and just download it right to it. But I thought I'd point these out in case you need to know what was available. All right, once you're done, go ahead and hit finish. All right, now we're at MB's main login page, so we need to sign in. It says sign into demo. That's the account that I created. So I'm going to click demo. Username is there. I'm going to put in my super secret password and hit sign in. And there we are. We've got MB installed and set up. Now let's talk about the main interface here, and we'll go over like a tour of the interface. So as you can see, we're at the home page here. Shows you your media libraries. We've got movies, music, TV shows. You'll see it scanning the TV shows right now. It's at 90% done. You can click on each library, and it goes into it. So movies, we'll click into it. It shows you the movies. Go back to home. Click on music. Shows you the music. Going back to home. Same thing with TV shows. And back to home. You've also got the same options right below home on the left hand side. You've got movies, music, TV shows, whichever one you click on, it's the same thing. So if you want to click over on the left or you can click on the top banner up here. Underneath my media, you'll see the latest movies. So as you get new media on your server, they will show up under the latest movies, music or TV shows or whatever libraries that you have. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll see latest music, latest TV shows. If we go into one of these, it starts playing the media. I'm going to jump ahead here. Because I could easily become... And if you're at all familiar with any kind of media player, like Plex or Jellyfin, a lot of the operations will be the same. MB's kind of nice. Gets you a little logo up here of what you're watching. Title, date, the timeline for it, total duration, when it's going to end. You can rewind 10 seconds, jump forward 10 seconds, play, a victim of a pause. You can look at some info on the show. Look at the chapters, if you've generated them, and the cast and the crew. Closed captioning, playback speed, settings, picture-in-picture -picture option, and full screen. If you get out of there, I hit escape. Now you'll see that we have a continue watching option up at the top. So if you've been watching a movie and you stop halfway, go get some dinner, get a snack, whatever, and it stops, whatever the reason is, you can always come back later on and you can just resume right where you were at. It's a nice feature. The continue watching will work for both TV shows and movies. All right, now let's go down to TV shows. As you can tell, the cover art isn't here for everything yet. It's still processing stuff in the background. It's currently found 77 episodes of Eureka. It's a good show, by the way, if you haven't seen it. It's worth a watch. So we'll go into that. Shows you the cover art for each season, the cast and the crew, and then other recommended items that are similar to this show. We'll go back. Music, same thing. In the top right, you've got options for MB Premiere, which is a subscription service. At the time of the recording of this, monthly was $4.99 US dollars. Yearly is $54 or lifetime is $119. I myself don't have the MB Premiere, so I don't know what it has to offer. But if it's something that you're interested in, you know, look through the features, see what's available, see if there's anything you're going to use. And if there is, and it's something that you like, I would just jump right to the lifetime at $119. Yes, it's a bit of a cost up front, but at $54 a year, it's two years worth. You know, if you're going to use it for more than two years, then the lifetime would definitely be the best value. I'm going to jump over there real quick. We'll click on it, go get MB Premiere, and we'll see what they say. There's the license cost. So here's the different features that MB Premiere has. You've got the option to get offline media, DVR option, you get free apps, hardware accelerated transcoding, cinema intros. That's kind of nice. The ability to play uh, in your car. I don't know if you should be watching movies as you're driving on the road, but you have that option, I guess. Scrolling down, MB Theater, automatically convert content, cover art, backup and restore option. What? That's not by default. Huh. It's interesting. Folder sync, which you can do that with other software, so that's not a big deal. And smart home integrations. There's some interesting stuff. All right, going back. Close that. Next option over is a casting option to play on another device. Next over, we've got our user account. You can go there. You can change the user or sign out. Next option is settings. All right, over on the left here, we've got a whole list of options that we can play with. And I'm not going to go through all these settings. This is going to be dependent on what you want. General, 
startup behavior, remember where you're last at, display mode, image sizes, screen savers, playback options, keyboard and remotes, display settings, change your themes, home screens. Now it looks like you can set the order of stuff on the home screen, which way you want it. My media is first. You can make this you know, latest media. Interesting. That's kind of nice. Playback controls, subtitles, user profiles. You can put images up for your users, put in passwords, pins for the profiles. That's kind of nice. Notifications, dashboard settings, general settings, users, MB Premier, libraries. If you need to go add another library, you'd go over here and do that. Live TV options, network options, transcoding, database, conversion, scheduled tasks, all kinds of stuff. Scheduled tasks is good to know about if you need to do a manual run of something. You can come in here, transfer media, hit play, go to the top and hit home, takes you back to the home page. So there you go. That pretty much covers MB, the installation, the setup, and the general use of it. It's, it's not a bad media server. I used to use MB back in the day when it was media browser, so it's it's been a few years. It seems like it's a pretty solid platform now, so you know if you need another one as a backup on your system, I think it's a good option. Looks pretty good. So that being said, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos, direct access to me on Discord, and they're both ad and sponsor free. I'll leave a link down in the description. Until then, check out one of these next, and I'll see you in the next one.